In this video, we are going to talk about Clostridium tetanus, right? So this bacteria uh, is the causative agent for tetanus, right? So uh, Clostridium tetani, this video is the, like the second part because in, in the first video, we talked about a Clostridium botulism. So if you click the link on the top right corner, you watch that video first, right? So let's continue. Clostridium tetani, what's the reservoir? Right, so this bacteria is normally found in soil, right? How does it infect us? So the method of transmission is actually uh, through endospores, right? So the endospores will be introduced uh, like uh, into wounds. For example, let's say like you are walking and then you step on a rusty nail containing the, the spores of uh, Clostridium tetani. You can get the infection through this way. And also uh, barbed wire, right? You, uh, rusty barbed wire. Uh, you can get infection through this way. Right. So uh, on metabolism, uh, as I already mentioned in the previous video, this one, this bacteria is, a, is an anaerobe, right? It's an anaerobic bacteria. Uh, virulence factor. Here, uh, like here on this, on virulence factors, I'm mainly talking about a flagella in this, uh, in this Clostridium series, right? So Clostridium tetani is motile, meaning to say uh, it is f flagella, right? So it's H antigen positive. Right. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the toxins. All right. So the main toxin uh, uh, in this bacteria is tetanospasmin. Okay. So tetanospasmin, this protein inhibits the release of glycine and GABA. Right. So glycine and GABA are inhibitory neurotransmitters. So if there is no inhibition, there is a sustained muscle contraction. Right. So in so you should understand this. In the previous video, we are saying like on, on botulism, there is no muscle contraction because there is no release of acetylcholine, right? So there is a flaccid paralysis, right? In tetanus, here there is increased or sustained paralysis because there is no inhibition. Inhibition results in sustained muscle contraction. I already mentioned this, right? Okay, uh, on clinical manifestation, as I said before, like there is a sustained muscle contraction, right? So there is muscle spasms, right? Muscle spasms. Uh, and uh, another specific symptom of uh, tetanus is lockjaw, also known as trismus. And the other one is resosadonicus, right? Like, like this, you see this uh, devilish smile, right? Uh and also, like, uh, there is a uh, respiratory muscle paralysis. If you still remember, I'm saying, like, on Clostridium botulinum, there is no contraction of the respiratory muscles at all. Here, in Clostridium tetanus, right, in Clostridium tetanus, there is increased or sustained muscle paralysis. Right. The other thing is... Uh, Back muscles, right? So back muscles, uh, like they contract. So you can see uh, this image, right? So this image is also a specific sign of what? Of tetanus, right? Okay, now let's talk about treatment, right? So the first position, we use a tetanus toxoid, right? So tetanus toxoid, this is a vaccination with formalin, inactivated uh, toxin right right so toxoid is a is a formalin inactivated toxin right which is a part of uh DTAP vaccine DTAP is diphtheria tetanus and pertussis then the second position we can use antitoxin right antitoxin this is human tetanus immunoglobulin right so this is actually a preformed anti-tetanus antibody right so this is what happens if you like if you come to contact with uh like these um uh nails with rust and we are showing like some symptoms of tetanus what happens is like if you give a vaccine 
there is no enough time for uh like for, for the antibodies to be formed right so you go straight to antitoxin you give this uh, human tetanus immunoglobulin right so this one will uh will eliminate the toxins right uh and uh, other methods you use you can use drugs like metronidazole or, or penicillin right and also you can do supportive therapy right supportive therapy this is like uh, mainly uh, ventilatory assistance right okay so this is diltap which I'm, i was talking about is diphtheria tetanus and acellular pertussis right Okay, let's talk about our uh, diagnosis, right? So, first thing, we do a uh, gram staining, right? So, on gram stain, uh, tetanus or Clostridium tetani bacteria, this bacteria presents is a gram positive rose, often with an endospore on one end, giving them the appearance of drumstick, right? So, in questions, they usually mention appearance of a uh, drumstick form, right? You can see here like the endospores on on the ends like this right okay so this is a clostridium tetany okay then the other method we can do culture and as i was saying uh, like in the previous video you need to create anaerobic conditions for uh, this bacteria thanks for watching if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos.